In recent years, sustainability concept has become the common interest of numerous disciplines. The reason for this opportunity is to perform perform the sustainable development. The concept of green architecture, also known as sustainable architecture or green building, is the theory, science and style of green buildings design and constructed in accordance with environmentally friendly principles. Green architecture strives to minimize the number of resources consumed in the building construction, use and operations, as well as curtailing the harm done to the environment through the emission, pollution, and waste of its components. To design, construct, operate, and maintain buildings, energy, water, and new material are utilized, as well as amount of waste, causing negative effect to health and environment is generated. In order to limit these effects of effects and design environmental sounds and resource efficient buildings, green building system must be introduced, clarified, understood, and practiced. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my immense pleasure to welcome you all for the first green talk in the year 2020, green rating system to measure the environmental performance of the built environment. To start off the session, I would like to introduce our environmental assertive speaker, Dr. Chaminda Isbandara. Dr. Chaminda Isbandara currently serves as a senior lecturer at the Department of Civil Engineering, University of Moratu, Peradeniya. Dr. Bandara received his BSc in Engineering in 2001, MSc Structural Engineering in 2011, and PhD Civil Engineering in 2015 from the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Peradeniya, Sri Lanka. He is a chartered civil engineer and a member of the Institution of Engineers, Sri Lanka. Graduate member of the Institution of Civil Engineers, United Kingdom, and associate member of the Society of Structural Engineers, Sri Lanka. And he is an accredited professor of the Green Building Council of Sri Lanka, and associate member of the Institute of Certified Professional Managers, Sri Lanka, and member of the Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science. Dr. Bandara was a research fellow at the National Research Council of Sri Lanka from 2011 to 2014. He worked as a civil engineer in several national and international organizations in several countries for more than a decade. Dr. Bandara has authored two books, published over 100 papers, and presented his research in many national and international conferences. He serves in the review panel of several international journals and in editorial committee of international conferences. With that, I would like to remind you housekeeping rules. Please switch off your mics and cameras during the session. And if you have any questions, please be kind enough to put them in the chat box. Dr. Bandara, over to you. Thank you very much, Situmini, uh, uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, and uh, I am happy actually to uh, uh, deliver this uh, uh, lecture or this uh, maybe a, a presentation uh, to have a, a good discussion with the professional audience uh, on this uh, particular topic. Uh, basically, uh, uh, we are actually going to look at uh, the present uh, environmental uh, problems in the world and uh, uh, then uh, the way we can measure the uh, performance of the built environment. That means uh, uh, to measure the, the performance of buildings and the cities, there are several uh, tools. Uh, now, hopefully, I will uh, only uh, touch today the uh, building tool that we have in the Green Building Council. Uh, probably, I think I will uh, give uh, maybe some details, maybe that uh, even the audience here can maybe try with your own uh, buildings. I will talk about some techniques and uh, especially I will uh, talk about the, the way how the uh, green rating system works and how we measure the performance of a building uh, using this uh, green rating uh, tools. Uh, uh, so, so that is just a brief about uh, the, the presentation that I'm going to do. Uh, maybe I will uh, share my slides uh, and probably I think I like to uh, uh, switch on, switch off my uh, video also during the presentation, but uh, maybe in the discussion I will uh, switch it on again. Uh, 
Uh, now, uh, uh, to start the presentation, uh, I like to uh, uh, summarize it in this content uh, that is, uh, we first talk about the uh, environmental performance of existing built environment. Uh, actually, we, we are in a, in a kind of a problem. Uh, we, we have a trouble because of the existing built environment that I will uh, show you uh, during my presentation. And then uh, to improve this uh, existing uh, uh, performance of the built environment, uh, now what we can do, uh, so actually what we have to do is to uh, try to go with the, uh, go with green buildings, so green cities. Uh, there we will talk about uh, the sustainability of the built environment and the uh, green SL rating system uh, as, the, as the tool. Uh, now, uh, now, I think we all know that uh, uh, most of these uh, high uh, consumptions of materials and high emission of uh, uh, various greenhouse gases initiated uh, uh, during and after the Industrial Revolution. So from around the uh, 1850s, uh, if you look at uh, all these charts, uh, we see a kind of, uh, I mean, starting the uh, consumption of materials and the emission of uh, various uh, carbon dioxide like uh, uh, gases uh, now for example uh, now uh, if you can uh, uh, look at uh, most of the material that we are consuming uh, a kind of uh, uh, exponential uh, consumption we can see and also uh, in the today's context uh, in 2020 the urban raw material consumption is about uh, 60 billion tons. So it, it's a huge uh, amount. Uh, I mean, when we talk about the materials, because the earth is, the resources uh, in the earth is limited, uh, but we are consuming at a very high rate. At the same time, uh, we consume a lot of energy. Uh, energy in the sense uh, to, to generate energy, we use uh, various uh, uh, sources, but still, the coal and oil, uh, like uh, uh, resources, are much used. I uh, think that we have to uh, de discuss, uh, and also about uh, two thirds of the energy produced in the world are consumed by cities. Uh, so that's why uh, we are talking about the the built environment, the cities. And then uh, a little bit about the GHG or the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, now, the uh, carbon dioxide equivalent uh, gas emissions, uh, actually it, it uh, even uh, went above uh, 50 uh, gigatons uh, in 2017, as you can see. Uh, but in average, we are talking about, uh, about 50 gigatons per year. So that is the rate of uh, emission of the uh, carbon dioxide equivalent gases. Uh, so that is uh, another thing to note. Uh, now, uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, slide uh, so about uh, uh, two thirds of the energy is used by cities and buildings. And uh, therefore, uh, about 39% uh, of the, uh, the CO2 of the emission of CO2 is also by buildings. So 28% of the total uh, CO2 emission uh, in the world uh, and uh, about 11% is for the uh, materials and the construction. So I think we can see that uh, the buildings are the, the largest uh, emitter uh, of uh, carbon dioxide. And then uh, uh, on the other hand, we emit uh, lots of other wastes. Uh, so uh, in, in summary, it's about uh, 2 billion tons of uh, solid waste annually worldwide we are emitting. So that is another, uh, another issue we have. Uh, because uh, now I think may, maybe most of you know that uh, when we talk about these solid waste emissions, again, the, most of these emissions are uh, you know, back to uh, greenhouse gases as well. Uh, then... Uh, the problem is uh, when we have lots of uh, emissions, uh, the, the, the issue we have is the global warming. Uh, what I have copied here is the, uh, the simple uh, uh, definition given by the Oxford Dictionary for the global warming. Uh, 
I think it's uh, it is uh, very uh, clear here the green uh, the the uh, the Earth's atmosphere generally attributed to the greenhouse effect caused by increased level of uh, carbon dioxide uh, and the other uh, chloro chlorocarbon. So that's what uh, it says. Uh, so that means uh, technically. Uh, what really happens is uh, whatever the carbon dioxide and the, the other greenhouse gases that we are emitting, uh, they, uh, they uh, deposit at the upper layers of the atmosphere. And then uh, when the, the radiation from the solar enters uh, into the earth, uh, uh, you know, it traps because of this uh, greenhouse gas layer. Uh, the reason why it traps is uh, when the incoming solar uh, radiation, the wavelength is different from, uh, you know, when it uh, hits on the ground, the wavelength length changes because of the, you know, the change of the energy and because part of the energy is absorbed by the earth when the, the wave hits on the ground. Therefore, with that change wavelength, uh, the, the gas, the, 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 this, uh, you know, the, the radiation, the heat uh, cannot escape back to the space. So therefore, whatever the heat that is uh, coming in uh, through this greenhouse gas layer that traps uh, between the gas layer and the earth. So that's why uh, day by day, year by year, uh, we, we have this uh, increasing temperature. Uh, so if we look at uh, uh, from the from 1850s, again, uh, now this is where the industrial revolution uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, went to its uh, peak, right? So from 1850s, if we consider the temperature as the, the, the benchmark of zero, uh, by uh, from that day, uh, you know, that time, uh, we are talking about uh, around uh, 1.25 degrees uh, Celsius increment in the global temperature. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, sometimes maybe people can say that, okay, it is not a big, big value, this uh, 1.25, but it is not. Uh, actually, the problem is if it uh, hits the 1.5 degree Celsius uh, target, uh, we will have, you know, more worst uh, situation uh, here in the, in the world. Uh, now, uh, actually, this, uh, this graph is from the uh, 2011 uh, IPCC report. IPCC means the, the International Panel for Climate Change. Uh, so they are the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the recognized body of UN uh, to estimate and assess the climate change effects uh, and they are issuing their uh, reports annually. Uh, so this is the, the latest uh, picture we have <coughs> about the global warming uh, from this uh, international body. And then uh, now, as I mentioned before, uh, now, now what you see here is uh, uh, the climate change. Uh, now, Again, if we look at the Oxford Dictionary, the climate change is defined as the change in the global and re global or regional climate patterns. In particular, a change apparent from the mid to late 20th century, that is somewhere we had the Industrial Revolution, uh, from there onwards, and attributed uh, largely to the increased level of atmospheric carbon dioxide. So, so that is how the climate change is defined. So because of this uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide, uh, because of the, uh, the, the, the global warming, uh, we see the climate change. Now, now this, uh, what, you, what you are seeing here in this figure is again uh, a very uh, a reputed uh, publication uh, of the uh, Cambridge University uh, Press in 2006. Uh, so actually why I'm using this slide here is in 2006, uh, scientists could predict a lot of things uh, that we are exp experiencing now. And now, for example, now the, uh, the climate, uh, the, the temperature increases about 1.25. So we are somewhere here. And, uh, you know, already we see uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, all these uh, problems, right? Because we are, we are somewhere here now in the temperature axis. So we already see the damages to the coral reef, the glacier disappearance and all that. Uh, so therefore, what I say is uh, scientifically, uh, these things can be predicted. And then uh, now, this is again from the IPCC report uh, issued in August, 2021. Another prediction, uh, 
by I mean if the, the if the temperature increases uh, by 1.5 degrees Celsius, uh, now this report uh, very clearly uh, talks about the impact uh, of that uh, increment to the world. So actually speaking, uh, in summary, uh, you know, numerous global environmental and disastrous issues, issues have been predicted. So that's what, uh, you know, that is how uh, it has been mentioned in the report. Uh, then uh, also we can talk about, uh, uh, you know, there is a discussion somehow to limit the, uh, uh, this uh, 1.5 degree uh, Celsius uh, temperature increment. Uh, I mean, to, to limit it uh, as much as possible. Uh, but uh, in calculations, what we can see is, uh, you know, to, to get this increment, uh, uh, I mean, we have to emit uh, 420 tons of uh, gigatons of carbon dioxide. When we emit 420, we will reach this level. And by 2020, uh, so this is, this is the remaining, from 2020, uh, and uh, per year, uh, we are at least emitting about uh, 42 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year. So therefore, uh, now this calculation is done in 2020. So in 10 years, uh, we are going to, so that means by around 2030, uh, we will be at that uh, particular temperature rise where we will be expecting or experiencing uh, you know, this uh, further uh, increased uh, events, uh, natural events. Uh, the other issue we have is uh, the urbanization. Of course, the, the population growth. Uh, the population growth is not a problem, but uh, the problem is the, the resources we have. Uh, so with the, with the increase in population, uh, what, what usually happens is the trend is the the cities are expanding, so we see uh, the urbanization, whereas uh, the, the villages, so, so they are kind of at a declining uh, situation. Uh, so we are talking about uh, the expansion of cities. And then uh, in particular, when we look at the population growth, now we are you know, somewhere here in 2022, uh, having about uh, 7.8 billion people. And the the prediction is by 2050, there will be about 9.7 billion people on the earth. And so that means uh, within this coming uh, 28 years, we are expecting about 1.8 billion you know, people on this earth uh, within, within these uh, coming 28 years. And so about 2 billion, right? Uh, but if you look at here, in 19, uh, in 19, uh, you know, hundreds, the population was, I mean, the global population was about 2 billion. And now within the next about 30 years, we are expecting that much of an increase. So I think you can understand that, uh, you know, there is a, I mean, with this, what happens is uh, now to build these cities for this uh, 1.8 billion people, uh, either we have to expand the existing cities or we have to, you know, put up new cities. So then we have to imagine the consumption of materials because we, materials is, I mean, we have a scarcity already. So to build whatever these cities or buildings, we need materials. So people, I mean, the scientists have predicted that, uh, you know, by 2050, the annual, uh, uh, the material usage will be about nine, uh, 90 billion tons per year. Uh, in 2010, it was about 40 billion tons, and now it's about uh, 55 to 60 billion tons. So it will increase to about uh, 90, billion, 90 billion tons per year uh, by uh, 2050. So that is the uh, kind of prediction we have with the population growth. And the other problem is, uh, now when we expand our cities, where to expand? We, what we do is we, you know, use the, the, I mean, we reduce the existing natural environment when we expanding cities. And uh, now the natural environment, especially the, the forests and the wet, wetlands, they are called the carbon sinks. Uh, whatever the emissions we have, uh, 
uh, now to convert this carbon dioxide back to oxygen and the other uh, other gases uh, we need all these greeneries the forests and the wetlands but with the expansion of cities what we do is we are reducing this uh, carbon sink so that means the we are talking about an aggravating problem so uh, so th that's what uh, you know i mean in the way i think we have to think about this uh, very critically even though we don't uh, mind this so much uh, so i think you can see there is a problem uh, now with that i will go to the uh, second half of this uh, presentation uh, that is uh, to talk about uh, you know how we can do this in a sustainable manner and uh, how we measure uh, the environmental performance of uh, green buildings uh, using a green rating tool now uh, now here we uh, talk about the concept of the sustainability uh, that is uh, if we can you know uh, develop uh, without consuming the you know the, the resources of the future generations so that is we call the sustainability uh, but the problem is uh, i will show you that we are already consuming the resources of the future generations uh, so what 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 we see here is uh, with this uh, ongoing trend uh, around uh, you know year 2000 uh, around year 2017 uh, we were talking about uh, one one and a half times the earth earth's uh, the rate we are consuming and now uh, by 2022 uh, it's some, somewhere about uh, 1.7 Uh, and maybe by 2030 uh, we are talking about uh, i mean we are going to consume like two times the resources the earth can be produced uh, earth can produce uh, annually uh, so that is actually the issue we have uh, to explain it a little bit uh, i think we have to little bit talk about the the ecological footprint so that is how we can explain this uh, situation in 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 more uh, clear manner Uh, now for example all of us we have a footprint on this world footprint means now if i if i take myself as an example now even though i have lands or not uh, there is a land somewhere on this earth who produces uh, you know crops for me the rice and all that and even though i don't have a land on the sea there is someone on there is a land in on this in the in, on the on the in the on the earth in the ocean that produce fish for me and likewise all of us we are consuming or we have a footprint on the on the earth so depending on our consumption depending on our level of consumption the amount we consume we increase our footprint what we have to try to do actually is to minimize that consumption so we reduce the footprint so our 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 weight our our effect on the on the earth so we have to reduce it but uh, if we look at uh, some of the countries uh, for example uh, country like south korea we know that it's a small country by area and the, the number of people uh, i mean there are i mean the population is very high very high dense country as well as they are developing very rapidly so they consume you know now 8.8.4 point, times the, the 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 resources the country can produce likewise uh, if we go to japan it's about seven times and likewise now uh, uh, so that is now when you average all these things that is why now as a whole the entire world we we consume about 1.6 times the earth uh, average uh, annually i mean the, that is the amount of resources the earth can produce so that's why i'm saying we are already consuming the resources of the future generations because if it is not this should be one earth our consumption should be limited to the the resource production of one earth so i think you 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 get this uh, understanding uh, and uh, one evidence is the world overshoot day uh, now i think you remember there were uh, lots of uh, news and you know all that even in the in the in the in the tv and all that about the world overshoot day Uh, now last year it was on july 29 so world overshoot day means by july 29th we consumed uh, you know the the things the earth can produce during for the entire year so i mean the the, the earth can produce uh, you know earth 
earth is giving us resources for the year entire year and we consumed it we completed it by july uh, 29 so that means for the rest of the time we are we are borrowing material from the future i think i think you understand so i mean to i mean, so where we should be is here so i mean we should be here actually but we consume very fast uh, so we are that means we have to borrow from the future generations and uh, i think you see there is a, in, in 2020 we have a little difference here. the reason is because of covid uh, lots of people you know they they reduce the transportation so therefore we had a, a kind of a good result there uh, so we could not uh, i mean it is not worse like uh, 2019 and 2021 uh, in 2020 material consumption wise uh, so because of all that all these uh, i think you know that we have these uh, uh, 17 sdgs the sustainable development goals agreed by all the almost all the united nations countries uh, even our country i think we are trying to you know to uh, to to satisfy whatever these requirements as a united united nations country uh, so i think as professionals we have to help uh, that effort uh, so then uh, uh, to talk about the the measuring the performance of buildings how we measure the environmental performance uh, now to have this uh, measuring tool we have to consider a lot of things one is uh, we have to consider the consumption of the buildings or the cities the emissions of the buildings or the cities then the whatever the the, the alterations the damage we do on the on the earth uh, to build these cities or buildings and then the demand with the population growth so these things are to be considered and the main uh, three uh, areas uh, when we talk about the the consumption and emission is the energy the materials and the land use so i think uh, so putting all these things together uh, there are green rating tools uh, of course i think uh, you know that there are various green rating tools tools for cities uh, tools for buildings uh, tools for you know transportation network and likewise uh, so all those tools are kind of uh, tools that that are measuring different parts of the uh, performance of uh, the built environment uh, and uh, now uh, basically uh, the the aspects that are considered in the green rating green rating tools are the sustainability uh, the sustainable sites that is the the kind of land use and then uh, water and the energy efficiency. Uh, so here we have the energy and materials, and then materials resources, indoor environmental quality, and the, the innovation and the design process. So these are the basic areas. And uh, in the rating tool, what we do is we allocate 100 points for these uh, sections, and then uh, we try to measure, you know, for a building out of 100, how many marks the building can you know, gain or obtain. So if you have uh, maybe maybe 70 marks, 80 marks, that's a good building. That means. And likewise, uh, we can rate the, I mean, we can measure the performance of that building uh, in that particular built environment. Uh, little bit about the uh, green rating tools, uh, the popular ones, uh, the BREEAM, the, the, the British uh, the, the tool, uh, that was the first one uh, developed in the world in 1990. And then uh, in 1993, the U.S. Uh, Green Building Council, uh, uh, you know, started uh, using their tools and they developed the, the lead, the, the most popular green rating tool in 1998. And then, uh, and then uh, we have the, uh, the uh, Green Building Councils of Australia, Brazil and, you know, many other countries uh, came together. Uh, by 2002 and in 2002 the world the world green building council was formed uh, you know putting all these uh, uh, green building councils together uh, uh, fortunately uh, i think uh, in the in, in our country we uh, the, the gbcsl uh, that was established in 2009 uh, i think uh, maybe most of you you know that uh, there were many people uh, behind uh, this uh, 
uh, initiation uh, including the, the present uh, chairman of the green building council professor ranjit disanayak uh, and uh, i think there were many others uh, in this in this uh, initi initiative uh, and uh, actually it is the, it is a member of the world green building council uh, so i think uh, at the moment in, in our country the green building council of sri lanka is uh, doing a very uh, good and uh, leading role uh, in this uh, uh, effort uh, when i talk about the green rating system because we have to talk about the measure how how we measure this uh, so so in the green rating uh, tool of uh, our green building council the building tool uh, we have these eight sections management sustainable sites water efficiency and likewise uh, so the, the marks distribution is as you can see here and now when we take a building so we take a building and then we try to uh, you know uh, give marks to that building for example for the management aspects we give four marks uh, for the site selection and the development aspects we give 25 marks and likewise water and energy 14 marks uh, so then uh, so that is the 100 right so we put them together you get 100 uh, but for a building it is very difficult to get all 100 so depending on the performance of the building the build building will get some some marks uh, so if that uh, the marks gained by the building is uh, between 40 and 49 we call it a green certified building if it is 50 and 59 it is a silver rated green building 60 to 69 it is a gold rated green building and above 70 it's a platinum rated building so that is how uh, we measure uh, or we rate buildings uh, so rating is depending on the performance right the performance are measured by these uh, eight sections uh, maybe i will take you through uh, these uh, eight aspects i think uh, now as i understood uh, there are a number of uh, professionals uh, uh, in this session and uh, i hope uh, uh, maybe most of you are not uh, uh, maybe to this uh, green uh, uh, building uh, design uh, aspects and the, the rating system maybe yet uh, so so therefore i will a little bit explain about these uh, uh, eight sections now the management management section of the green rating tool uh, is uh, you know what the coverage is here uh, that is, uh, I mean, we have to design the building correctly. So starting from the uh, design stage, uh, there should be a, a person who knows about the green designs. So that is, we call the green accredited professional. And uh, we have to think about the, the energy and the, you know, the water op optimization and, and then uh, the environmental management and all that. So all those things are to be considered during the design. And uh, if everything is well, we give four marks out of 100 uh, for that building from this section. So depending on what the building can achieve, it can be three or two or one or nothing. Uh, and the other uh, thing uh, I like to highlight is there are uh, prerequisites that are, I mean, these are essential. So all the prerequisites, prerequisites should be satisfied uh, to get the green rating. And then uh, when we go to the uh, sustainable sites, maybe I will try to summarize this. So there are, you know, uh, 25 uh, marks given for this section. Uh, basically, we look at, uh, you know, aspects like uh, what I have here. Uh, first thing is uh, we don't promote, uh, you know, using agricultural lands and public lands and things like that uh, for buildings. So you will not get uh, anything, uh, I mean, it is not a green building if uh, it is developed on a site like that. Uh, we promote uh, using uh, brown fields. So what you see, something like this, right? The abundant lands. So if we can convert back uh, <coughs> those lands to uh, a situation like this, so that is what we are trying to do. And then uh, we look at, when we select these sites, we look at the community connectivity, how connected we are with the community. Now, for example, now when you select a land for a building, if there are schools, hospitals, the other shops, temples, you know, all those things are nearby, within 0.8 kilometers, that means 
the residents of this building or the occupants of this building, uh, they don't need any vehicle, you know, any transport. They can just walk to all these places. So they are connected very closely with the community. So that is uh, given marks. Uh, and also uh, to promote the public transport, because we know that uh, the public transport is the, the best uh, to reduce the emission. Uh, so to promote public transport, if you see, if your land, the land you are selected is around or nearby a, a public bus route, you know, so it is an uh, advantage. So if you have at least two uh, bus roads within 0.4 kilometers, so you get marks. And uh, also in the design, we have to promote uh, green mode transport, uh, that is uh, bicycles and all that. We can provide parking and all those things so that uh, people will, I mean, we can promote people to use them. And also we promote, uh, uh, you know, the carpooling, uh, instead of using a person per car, if a group of people can, you know, use one vehicle, so that is promoted. Uh, and uh, also in this section, we talk about uh, the maximum possible uh, lesser damage to the natural environment. For example, maybe the architect can think about, uh, you know, designing the building without uh, going for large excavations. Or maybe, you know, we can, we can think about uh, uh, changing the shape of the building to protect some existing large trees, so things like that. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we, we consider the heat island effect in this section. Uh, heat island effect in the sense, uh, I think we know that uh, the cities are heat islands because, uh, because of the hardscape, the cities absorb heat and then they emit heat. So therefore, if the surrounding is a normal natural area, you know, the, the temperature in a city is higher than the normal natural temperature of a normal outside area. So therefore, on the map, uh, if you look at a kind of a thermal uh, uh, imaging, you will see that the cities are heat islands. Uh, usually the temperature is one or two degrees higher. Uh, now to reduce this effect, uh, one thing we can do is of course, to cover the buildings with greeneries. So, so you can then, because we know that the buildings are not absorbing, of course they absorb heat, but they don't emit. So therefore, uh, because they use that as the energy for the growth of the tree. So therefore that is the, the best option. Other than that, uh, we can use whatever the, the, the materials we have for the roof and all that uh, to reduce the heat island effect. So that is promoted in the green building. And then uh, the pollution, especially the light pollution. I think we never maybe imagine that the light is also polluting the world. Uh, so light is polluting. So when you have lots of light and maybe if you, maybe at the night, if you cannot see the stars, so that means the, the your sky is polluted. Uh, so to limit that, uh, we have to, you know, uh, do, I mean, pay attention in our design. Of course, we can use shades and all that, uh, I mean, to to not to allow the light to go everywhere and pollute the sky. Uh, because uh, there is a reason, right? Uh, because, because there are lots of species who lose, uh, I mean, who find their food and all that at night. So when we put lights on them, uh, those species cannot live anymore. So then a uh, uh, bit about the third uh, section, which is the water efficiency. So we have 14 marks. If the building is, uh, you know, water efficient, we give 14 marks. So depending on the uh, amount of, uh, you know, what you can do with your building, uh, this, uh, you can gain the number of points uh, out of this. Uh, basically, uh, we promote uh, uh, the rainwater harvesting. Uh, at least we can try to use rainwater for toilet flushing, at least I am saying, uh, because, uh, now, usually, you know, if we, if we flush uh, maybe 2.4, 2.5 liters uh, just for one uh, visit to the toilet, uh, it is, uh, I mean, per person, I mean, if we go maybe four times at least uh, per day, let's say, uh, so we are flushing about 10 liters, potable, drinkable water, but we drink maybe 1.5 liters maximum. So I think then we can think about uh, you know, how much uh, this uh, expensive and, you know, purified water we are just uh, flushing and putting away. 
because the water is produced for drinking with all those uh, uh, treatments right but we flush i mean we drink 1 liter or 1.5 and we we flush about 10 liters a day more than that uh, so we have to uh, think about going for water efficient fixtures so so there are you know water efficient fixtures that we can try to use uh, and then also in this section we promote uh, infiltration the groundwater infiltration uh, because in cities uh, because of the hardscape again uh, because most of the <coughs> uh, the 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 surface is covered with buildings or asphalt asphalt roads or concrete roads concrete pavements so there is no space for the rainwater to infiltrate into the ground so to allow that uh, you know we have to have a solution so usually we promote uh, storm water basins and systems like that uh, you know for the rainwater to uh, be infiltrated uh, back to the earth so that it recharges the groundwater table very important and other than that uh, we promote in the green rating system uh, to go for native plants uh, because uh, if you if you have native plants native trees you don't have to put uh, water uh, you know for them because they are native they know how to survive in that particular environment uh, so we can uh, reduce the water use if we use uh, native trees and native plants uh, so that's about uh, a summary about the uh, uh, water efficient part i think uh, i mean whatever i am mentioning i think maybe some of you can even try uh, in your house right uh, these are i mean doable things and then uh, looking at the energy and atmosphere section uh, of course uh, by the word i think we can understand that we are going to optimize the energy use of the building uh, here uh, one uh, main thing to consider is the orientation of the building during the design stage uh, because uh, our country is uh, almost uh, you know at the equator and uh, therefore we know that uh, the sun the path of the sun is towards the south direction so if you put lots of uh, openings the doors and windows on the south side uh, you will get light and heat both uh, but uh, as a country in the equator on the equator we don't need heat into our buildings so we only need the light uh, so therefore we have to think about uh, you know uh, doing something for these doors and windows that are on the south side Uh, so maybe covering with greenery so maybe putting solar panels on that side whatever it is and then uh, uh, the other uh, things we can uh, think about uh, to reduce the uh, the energy use is uh, of course uh, uh, you know covering with uh, greeneries and all that so that is one option uh, even the vehicles if we park them you know under the greeneries so then uh, i think when you you know start it uh, in the day time uh, you are i mean the, the even the fuel consumption will be better because you don't need the the ac to run very fast to make it cooler and also uh, you know using water bodies uh, with the buildings because we know the, the the heat absorption capacity of water is very high so we can use that uh, advantage if you use uh, water uh, bodies with buildings Uh, so buildings will be cooler and then uh, the use of daylight as much as possible so the architects can think about of course we are doing that uh, so putting you know the daylight as much as possible into the building uh, so that we can reduce the at least the daytime uh, electrical usage uh, and uh, just uh, i like this uh, particular photograph because uh, what you see here is now when you have a direct sunlight into a building and a water body there you know the heat will be absorbed by this water so it's a kind of a very uh, interesting concept and then uh, also we can think about the natural uh, phenomenon you know we have the early days in our houses we had the chimney uh, you know that uh, suck whatever the the air inside the building uh, because of the uh, moving wind or the flowing wind right so maybe we can think about uh, systems like that or like uh, you know on uh, blind walls uh, because of the heat uh, when the the wall is heated up automatically the air in that area will be you know the weight will be less in heated air so the air will go up so we can create a, a, a circulation path so things like that natural 
other than that uh, uh, we promote uh, the the solar panels and the the renewable uh, energy sources uh, to reduce the ghg emission and then the you know whatever the the possible uh, uh, latest uh, energy consuming devices and then uh, the energy simulation uh, to identify you know where the energy consumption is high and whether you have to put openings or exhaust fans and like that and then uh, then i think i will uh, without uh, going to item 5 i like to just come to the item number 6 the section 6 which is uh, into environmental quality this is again uh, interrelated with the uh, item 4 energy and atmosphere because here we talk about again the the comfort inside the building so to have a good comfort uh, i mean we need uh, better ventilation uh, maybe with or without air conditioning uh, and uh, very good light and all that uh, so here uh, of course uh, we have to think about uh, you know the cross ventilation uh, through buildings uh, maybe by creating you know green passages between buildings with uh, water bodies maybe probably and then uh, the the daylight and views uh, because uh, you know if uh, if there is a, a good environment outside and if you provide enough uh, views uh, for the occupants to see outside uh, that will be uh, kind of very good right uh, because that will release your mind uh, it it will relax uh, the mind so so it is even uh, not only uh, i mean it is even good for the the health and then uh, the use of uh, low emitting materials so most of the uh, the materials that we use inside our buildings including paints you know if we if you feel uh, a smell uh, that that means it has the volatile organic uh, compounds so that's why we feel a smell so those are again uh, not good for the health right so we know it so therefore we have to think about uh, all the carpets the paints and all that uh, maybe to go with uh, low emitting uh, materials of course there are green certified uh, materials to be used and even the whatever the, the the fragrances that we use the air freshness and all that so those are also again you know with voc so better we can you know go for natural flowers instead and then uh, uh, to have this uh, indoor environmental comfort uh, we can you know also use the technology because we can use uh, you know various uh, monitoring mechanisms the, because the technology is already there so that is uh, one of the, the one of the very well used options uh, uh, at the moment and then uh, i will uh, now uh, when we talk about the materials i think the time is uh, going fast but uh, uh, we promote you know keeping the existing buildings as it is as much as possible so if you can incorporate your new building with the existing building so that is the best because then you you know you further use the materials of the existing building because i was talking about the material scarcity is scarcity right we we have a problem with the materials so we have to maintain we have to use whatever the existing buildings as much as possible so try to incorporate the new buildings with the existing ones and then uh, try to use recycled materials rather than excavating and extracting uh, new materials and then uh, we have to try to use certified timber not the timber from the forest right uh, we can grow timber within 10 15 years we can get the harvest so because it is a renewable material it is not like cement and concrete and steel because to produce cement uh, to produce uh, steel earth needs billions of years but to produce timber it's about 15 to 20 years right so we have timber as a renewable material uh, we can grow it cut it and use it, but not from the forest and then uh, uh, of course we promote uh, recycling in the in the green buildings uh, the waste management so we have to you know segregate the materials uh, we have to uh, you know try to uh, reuse or res- i mean send these materials to uh, recycling uh, plants uh, so we can uh, kind of again reduce the uh, virgin material usage and then uh, to do all these things we have the section 7 in the green rating system we have to do innovations i mean without innovations we we cannot do most of the things i was talking about right so we have to do innovations 
so we give marks for the innovations also and then uh, of course uh, in our sri lanka green rating tool uh, we have an item the eighth uh, section on the uh, social and cultural awareness Uh, because uh, as a country with uh, you know more than 2500 years uh, heritage and the culture uh, we have to respect that so when we do designs when we construct buildings uh, we have to think about the culture in that city uh, so 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 that is the 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 essence of this uh, criteria uh, so we have to look at the culture the well being the public health safety and all those things are included here so if we have if we satisfy with this uh, you, you get another uh, four points so i think uh, that's how uh, we uh, we measure so i was talking about uh, how these 100 points are distributed uh, among the green rating system so if you can claim if you can i mean even in your own house your own office uh, you can count these ma- I mean, these points right you can just uh, take a print out and then you try to see whether these marks are there so if it is there your building is already a green building if it is at the margin maybe you can try to improve it so that way i think uh, we can help uh, uh, save the environment uh, so i think uh, with that i think i can uh, conclude the 